We're talking about romance scams. This is a process of gaining someone's trust and affection, usually through a dating app, and then using that pretense to ask for money. One of the world's most well-known romance scams involved a man who was dubbed the Tinder Swindler back in 2018. His victims say he stole their hearts before taking millions from them. Two of his alleged victims will join us live, but first, let's take a look at their story. I had just moved to London. I was on the apps. It wasn't something new for me, and I had already had one great relationship from Tinder. So for me, it was very new, and I had just like got it out of the dating scene, basically. The first time I met him was in Amsterdam. We had been talking for about like three weeks before I went there to see him. My first meeting with Simon was in, in London. I had was just finishing up my masters and I met him for a coffee date. He wanted to spend more time with me and but he was traveling and wondered if I wanted to travel with them. That was when the infamous uh, private jet trip came up on the table. He did tell me in the beginning that he worked uh, with his family, his diamond company. I mean, you have to understand that you meet his bodyguard, you meet his co-worker, and you meet another person who works for him. I got this feeling where I was like, I have known this person for 10 years. He was an amazing guy, funny, uh, ambitious. He gave me like a hundred red roses for, for my birthday. Uh, he traveled solely to see me in London, which I thought was super, you know, romantic. I had a friendship relationship with him. This was a person that I spoke to almost every day. I thought it was my... I thought it was my best friend. With me, we, we did have a committed relationship. We were gonna move in together in London. I wanted to settle down. I wanted to have kids. But nothing was real, like not even his name. I think a lot of people can reference to having a relationship with someone who has cheated and you can feel like you didn't know the person because you didn't expect this from them. So just imagine that entire person just like never existed because that's how it was for us. Unbelievable. To learn just how far this scam went, please welcome Cecilia and Pernilla to the show. Wow. Thank you wow. for sharing your story, ladies. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage. Absolutely. <laughs> Cecilia, you. you thought this was a man you were going to marry. I was going to ask you, what were his reasons for the first time needing your money? What was the first excuse? Uh, the first excuse was just everyone's been asking. He's a billionaire. Why was he asking for money? But right. he was asking for... Uh, he had these enemies uh, that could see where he was traveling uh, by the spend on his card and he had a security team and then he said this little favor can I just borrow your card for some time and travel under your name Cecilia Fjellhoy and then I started you know filling up the credit card with high consumer debt loans and then in the end yeah that's what wow. <laughs> that's how it started wow right so I'm sure a lot of our viewers are asking I'm talking to you Pernilla what did he tell you about the money? Was it just that this was, he just couldn't get to it at the time and that's why he just needed you to front him? Yeah, he needed the money for security and it wasn't only for him, it was for me as well. So he used real articles that was regarding the family that he was saying he was from. And these were real articles from Israel. So it turned mm. out to become a gold mine for him. And, uh, he needed the money for security and it also made it into like I was under threat so I, I was scared. Wow. I'm so angry and I've seen the documentary on Netflix with you and him. I just can't imagine what you two not only went through but what you continue to go through. So how much did you each of you end up giving him? $70,000. Uh and two hundred and fifty thousand oh, dollars. I'm so sorry, I'm so ladies. Sorry, I'm just so upset. Uh, yeah. Uh, no words, Pernilla. I mean, looking back, were there any red flags that you or other people around you might have ignored in that moment? Well, definitely. When looking back at it, especially when he started asking for for money and the problems were started to come up. But you also have to keep in mind it took almost nine months before they started to ask for money. Mm. But the money part definitely is the biggest red flag, but it's hard to see it when you're trapped in it. And I think that people need to understand that when it comes to fraud victims. And what about you, Cecilia? And was there anyone in your life that raised a red flag saying something's not right that maybe you were like, you don't know him mm -hmm. like I know him? Mm -hmm. um, for me, I think 
why I felt so deeply into this was that I had recently moved to London. So I had no one that actually knew ah. how far and deep into this I was. Oh. And it was the same thing. Like the red flag is that you're giving him, <laughs> I gave him my credit card. I kept giving him money, but it's so real. And he's using fear and love and he's mixing the two of them. And as Pranilla was saying, he's making it be about your safety as well. Mm. So it ends up really, really badly. But you would call it that you're in the rat wheel mm. <laughs> and you can't see it from the outside. It's almost like jumping off. It's just impossible because you can't see straight. Right. He's got that we're in this together kind well, of. Right. Not only to say, that, you... but the biggest thing that stood out to me is the idea that they could be isolated. Right. Because they don't and have vulnerable. people around. She has nobody right. there to help. And he's yes. an expert manipulator. Uh, okay, so DBL Nation, stay with us. When we come back, we will continue our conversation with Cecilia and Prunella, and they will tell us how they discovered the truth. Wow. Welcome back to this special edition of DBL. Today we are talking all about scams and right now we are continuing our conversation with two women who say they were conned by the Tinder swindler. So please welcome back Cecilia and Pernilla uh, to DBL. Thank you again for staying with us. So many questions. A lot of questions. Yeah. Um, Cecilia, <laughs> when did Simon's lies start to unravel and what happened when you finally confronted him? Well, he had been working on this big deal and when in the end he lost it and you know, everything just went wrong, nothing ever went right. So my body physically started to tell me and I almost like threw up, I went to work. I was working, you know, 100%, so I went to work every single day. And in the end, you just knew he changed personality. He started gaslighting me saying that I should be by his side because I got invoices, you know, I needed to pay. And that's when I contacted Amex in the end and asked and said that I understood that he had defrauded me. And they told me that, yeah, he was a long time fraudster. So they were the ones who broke the news. Amex. To me. I can't imagine what you were Good feeling. Uh, Pernilla, how did you find out about the truth? Well, it all unraveled for me due to Cecilia contacted the news reporters in uh, Norway, Viju, who did the original piece of the Tinder Swindler. So I found out the truth through a reporter, which was very sad due to so much police, uh, credit cards, companies knew about me. So I found it quite sad that no one had reached out and really trying to prevent the ongoing fraud. And I think that a lot of these institutions need to take more responsibility of what is really going on for these fraud victims. Wow. Well, Cecilia, I have to ask you this because we're talking about all these things that have happened in the past, but I think myself and the audience included wants to know, how does this affect your day-to-day -day currently, like post this relationship ending? I think for both me and Pernilla, it's it's just a horrible thing having trusted someone when right. it comes to emotional scams. It's not only the money that's being lost, which has affected our lives tremendously, but it's like trusting people again and mm. feeling we are doing okay now. Um, but of course, there's still a lot of extra debts coming after this. You know, we had lawyer fees, so it's an ongoing battle. It's been five years, oh and I don't God. think it should have been that we are, have to fight this much to get justice. Uh, but yeah, that is the situation. Of course, you're healing from it, but I think that's an important thing for us to say. I have, yeah. a, I have a quick follow-up question. Uh, have you thought about uh, seeking any therapy or anything in terms of f future relationships, making sure that you're able to trust again? Yeah, I think, I think we, we as together as a team have become our best therapists together right. against some types because awesome. you're never the strongest alone and we do understand each other on a different type of level. That's, so that's amazing. So it's been my best therapist. And also making the movie was really good therapy yeah. for me. It was, it was amazing. It was like cathartic for both of you. I have this question. A lot of people just, you know, on our chat are so in favor of you guys and are so angry. I am too. And Simon denies all of these allegations. He's never served jail time for these crimes against you ladies, which again makes me hot. He has served time for other fraud charges, but for both of you, what does justice look like in your case? What would you want to see your fantasy? I mean, like justice have changed through the years from him getting caught and doing jail time from what he did for us. I mean, it become the battle for all frauds, so it's not only about him. And I think justice for us is that we want to make a positive change and talk about it as much as possible. And also to get the apps, mm. the owner of them, to take responsibility yes. as well, to really work with the identification to see that this is the real person that you were talking to as well. I think they need to take a lot more responsibility, but it has changed during the years. And um, it is very sad that he's hiding in Israel and trying to stay away from the justice still. Mm.
Justice will eventually be served. Has to. It has to. Mm -hmm. DBL Nation, to watch this entire story, check out The Tinder Swindler on Netflix. You can also check out these ladies' websites by scanning the QR codes on your screen right now. Also, visit Cecilia's nonprofit that helps fraud victims. Wow. Go to lovesaid.org. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you Such both. Such courage. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you.